Hi, Shannon here at Ramsey County's Tamarack Nature Center. We had so much fun catching bugs the other day that we wanted to show you how to do that yourself because bug catching is one of the favorite activities here at Tamarack's summer day camps. So we are gonna show you how to make your own bug catching kit. We're gonna start out with a net. So we use that really cool net to catch the bugs in the tall grass. You can make one of your own. It's actually pretty easy. We use a pillowcase. It can be an old pillowcase that you don't want anymore. You can go and get a new one. Cool, fancy pattern. Doesn't matter, any kind of pillowcase. Everybody's best friend. Duct tape can be plain, can be patterned, whatever. A wire hanger that's bent in somewhat the shape of a circle and then you need to straighten out the little hook at the end. If you don't have a wire hanger, I'm told that you can go to a dry cleaner and they just have racks of wire hangers there that they let people take. So you can try that. Or you can go to the hardware store and get some 12-ish gauge wire to use. Don't go to the craft store. Craft wire is not the same as the wire that you get at the hardware store. Craft wire is very flimsy and it doesn't really hold its shape. So you're gonna wanna go to the hardware store. Get some wire that's easy enough to bend but sturdy enough that it will hold its shape and then you're going to need a dowel of some sort i have a 3 8 inch dowel here this would i say be the minimum size you want something that's not going to be too bendy this bends a little bit i would probably if i was purchasing this would have gotten a 5 8 inch or maybe even 7 8 of an inch this i just found laying around at the nature center so we're using 3 8 and it'll be fine I also found laying around the nature center this old broom handle. So if you want to make a longer handled net or something for an adult or a larger kid, you can use a broom handle if you have an old broken broom or something around or a shovel. Or I think you can buy these at the hardware store maybe. But we're not going to use that today so I'm going to put that back here. I'm going to use the dowel. To make your net, I started with the pillowcase flipped inside out. If you don't really care about what it looks like, it's fine. If you don't want the seams to show or the duct tape to show, you're gonna wanna start with it inside out. You're gonna thread it up through your hoop here and then fold the edges down. Now, if you have the skill of hand sewing, you can actually just stitch this down with a needle and thread. It works really well to make a sturdy net. I know a lot of people don't hand sew or you don't even have needle and thread at home, but lots of people have duct tape. So that's what we're using today. Duct tape comes in all shapes and sizes. You want to make sure that you tape the edge to the pillowcase. I like to work with small pieces of duct tape because I'm kind of duct tape challenged and I always get the tape stuck to itself and then it doesn't work. So I'm using little pieces. You can use whatever you want you just need to make sure that the wire is under that fold and that you're taping the edge to the pillowcase all right i'm not going to do this whole thing because it's going to take forever but you get the idea stick it down and here's where the neat comes in if you don't want to see the seams or the duct tape just flip it inside out and see then your duct tape will be down in there. Yours will be taped all the way down and that's your net. Then you need to attach it to the dowel with more duct tape. Again, you're gonna wanna tape down the whole thing and I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. Just gonna get it going. So just wrap the duct tape around Tape it all the way to the end. That's gonna give you a sturdy net. Now, you will be ready to go catch some bugs in the tall grass. But wait, there's more. We're not always gonna be looking for bugs in the tall grass. Sometimes you might see a bug on the sidewalk or in the short grass. This doesn't work in short grass. It only works in tall grass. So you need a bug catcher, especially if you don't like to touch bugs. First, you need a couple of clear cups. The only thing we purchased for this project was um, drinks at a local coffee store or restaurant. My current obsession is the mango iced tea lemonade. So I have one of those cups. You need the lids on the cups. 
you need the straw that they gave you to drink it and you also need a smoothie straw you need to cut it in half i already cut mine in half if you go to a coffee shop and you just get your regular straw and you ask them for a smoothie straw they will probably give you one they're usually really nice like that otherwise you can go to bed bath and beyond or i think i've seen them at target sometimes they're called milkshake straws but they're they're just the wider bigger straws you need a bigger straw also if you have bendy straws laying around you can use a bendy straw you just need one skinny straw one wide straw cut the wide straw in half you need two pieces you're going to poke the wide straw through the lid on the cup see one straw makes two bug catchers then you need a scissors or what's even better is if you have a craft knife or some kind of exacto knife utility knife around that actually works the best you can make it happen with the scissors but it's a little bit harder because what you need to do is cut a hole in the side of your cup and it's easier to poke the craft knife through although i did find the scissors handy for widening my hole i just cut an x in the side of my cup and then i need to make it a little bit bigger because the side of the cup is tough and if you try to push the straw through the straw squishes so i actually made the hole there and i can poke the straw through now now i need a bug i don't have a bug here on my table but i do have a little acorn cap that I'm gonna put on the table. So let's pretend this is our bug. We need to very carefully get next to the bug. We don't wanna hurt the bug. We wanna be careful with the bug. Just put the opening of the straw right there next to it and then just suck in. And now you have your bug in there. But don't shake him like that. That's not nice to shake the bugs. We are almost finished with our bug kit here. We have our net. We have our bug catchers. We need a few other things. If you have some little yogurt containers sitting around, these little white cups are really great for holding bugs temporarily. White is best color because bugs show up really well. If you don't eat yogurt, maybe you like sour cream, you could use uh, small sour cream containers. Little white spoons. These are soup spoons. They're really nice because they have a little bit deeper bowl on them than just the regular spoons that you get. But you can use a regular plastic spoon too. It doesn't matter. It's just for scooping the bugs if you don't like to touch them. I personally don't mind touching bugs, so it's fine. Although some you don't really wanna to touch, like centipedes sometimes bite, so you need to be careful. And then you need an investigation stick. So you could use just a popsicle stick or you can go out and find a cool stick. I found this one, it kind of has a handle on it. So that's kind of cool. This is for digging through leaf litter. So the bugs like to hide underneath things. And if you don't want to move stuff with your hands, again, if you're kind of squeamish about touching the bugs, you can gently use a stick to sort of move through the leaf litter, move it around and see what you can find underneath that. And the most beautiful thing about this and making your own bug net is look, it all fits inside of here and you can get it all in your bug net. And now you're ready to go on an adventure and we are gonna show you where to find all of the cool bugs. Hi, we're back here out in our short grass prairie to show you how to use the net that we just made. So the supplies that I have here are the net, I've got my bug catcher, I've got a cup and a spoon. If you happen to have a cool little critter cage, you can bring that out too. You can get these at a pet store. And a sheet, just an old sheet. It needs to be white though. Uh, colors don't really work. White is the best. It's just the bugs show up better once you get them out of your net. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole sheet. You see, I just have a little piece. You can also just, if you have an extra white pillowcase, that is actually big enough you can use that so to use your net you need some tall grass not everybody has tall grass in their yard but it might be that you can leave a little spot of spot of your yard unmowed that you can let get tall or if you go to a park or maybe a, a schoolyard sometimes they leave the edges of the parks unmowed and there's some tall grass there this net only works in the tall grass you're going to put it down you're going to sweep it back and forth and all of the little bugs that are down in the grass are hopefully gonna hop into your net. And then you're just gonna flip it inside out and you're gonna see what hops out 
onto your sheet. And we'll take an up close look in just a second here what I got in my net. Once you have your sweep netting done out in the grass, you might wanna just kinda of hold it closed until you can get back to the sheet and then very gently just turn it inside out and give it a little shake. You can see some things, the flying things will fly away. I've got a little moth in there too. <gasps> Look at the lace wing crawling on my watch. We did catch a couple of grasshoppers here. Let's see if we can catch one. Here we go. There's a little grasshopper, a big green one. We have lots of grasshoppers out here in our short grass prairie. We also have a little inchworm. Let's see if I can scoop him. Boop. There he is in my hand. You can see him pretty good in my hand. That's the other thing about having a white plastic spoon is once you've scooped stuff up into your spoon, you can see it pretty well because of the contrast of the bugger, the inchworm sliding around on my spoon. So we've got a couple grasshoppers. You can also, if you find something small enough, I don't know if I have anything on here, we can try catching our leaf hopper. Oh, I'm not sure. The grasshoppers are probably a little bit big for your bug catcher. Oh, wait, I see one I can suck up. Okay, it might be kind of hard to see, but he is in there. He's at the bottom. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, he slides when I turn the cup. But that's how you catch a little bug in your bug catcher. And those are some of the things that you can see in the tall, tall grass. We are in a very different habitat here before we were out in the sun in the prairie. And now we are in the shaded forest down by our sugar bush. And in a mature forest like this, you have a lot of downed logs. And that's where we find the bugs because a lot of these critters that we're looking at are decomposers. So they're down here eating up all the leaf litter and turning it into compost and they're composting all the stuff. So I have my same equipment. I've got my bug catcher, I've got a spoon and a little tub here. If you have the bug box and then also your investigation stick. Remember I showed you the investigation stick earlier. In case you don't want to dig through the leaves with your fingers, you can use a stick. Just remember to be very gentle with the stick. And we're going to show you up close what might be under this log right here. Now you have to look fast because a lot of these critters like the dark. So as soon as I roll this log over, they're going to scurry to every which direction to try to stay in the dark. So let's see. Oh, it doesn't look like we have too many fast moving ones under here today. I do have a worm. All right, I'm going to need my spoon. See, that's what your spoon is for. To kind of dig down under there. Oh, there he goes. Oh, there were two worms there. So I've got an earthworm. There's another one down there. He's not too happy with me. And I thought I saw some sow bugs on here. They like to crawl around on the log right here, but I think they all scurried. There's another worm. Let's try another log and see what else we can find. Oh, no scurrying. Ah, oh, we have so bugs under this one. They're so well camouflaged. Oh, he's playing dead. He's upside down. There we go. Well, he disappeared. Oh, 
Okay, we've picked a different log to see if we can get some different results. Let's see. Ooh, lots of activity under here. I've got a big beetle. These ground beetles are pretty harmless. They won't do anything to you. I don't recommend picking up centipedes. Centipedes might bite. I don't know if you can see, there's a bunch of teeny tiny ants. These are probably carpenter ants down here. They're very small, hard to scoop up. They're very busy. And they're all over on the log. What you do want to make sure is that when you're rolling logs, you don't pick them up and throw them anywhere because these logs are homes for a lot of different animals and it takes a long time while the log is sitting on the ground to kind of establish a good habitat for all of these critters so if we pick them up and chuck them around the forest we're wrecking their homes they now have to go find a different place to live so if you're going to roll logs you need to make sure you put it back very gently exactly where you found it and that way their home is intact they don't have to go find another place to live and especially if you're doing this here at Tamarack we use these logs for our programs they're very important and we need them to be where they are that helps us find these critters when we have a bunch of kids out here so I know that most of you don't have a log in your backyard and you're probably going to come here to find one and I'm okay with that as long as you treat it respectfully and put it back where you found it